Welcome to this course on algebraic topology. My name is Roman Sauer and together with Holger Kammeyer, we guide you through this course. So the way it works is that one of us is writing on the electronic whiteboard and the other is behind the main camera and hopefully asking intelligent questions and making profound comments. And we also take turns to make it more interesting for us. This course is a sequel to a course on topology that we gave in the summer term. Yeah, though admittedly it was in German. Yes, unfortunately it was in German. You can watch this course on uh, my YouTube channel. And my hope is that with the automatic uh, English subtitles, um, you still have some worthy inform some useful information. Yeah. In any case, I think that um, if you know the fundamental group, a little bit of category theory, and maybe if you've heard about CW complexes, then you should be well prepared to take this course. So let's start. What is algebraic topology? Algebraic topology translates questions from topology or geometry to algebraic questions, and sometimes vice versa. And translating means mathematically having a functor. So the main task of algebraic topology is the construction of functors from the category of topological spaces to some algebraic category. So let's write that down. We have the category top consisting of topological spaces and continuous maps. And we consider functors to some algebraic category. So let me put this in quotation marks, algebraic categories. Examples are R modules, category of R modules, where R is some ring. It could be the category of groups, or it could be the category of abelian groups. So in the previous course, we constructed one such functor from the category of topological spaces. A bit more precise, we actually considered pointed topological spaces. And this functor was the fundamental group. And to motivate this course and to motivate the main topic of this course, which is singular homology theory, I want to revisit this construction of the fundamental group, look at how do elements look like in the fundamental group of a space, and try to explore how we could generalize this to more powerful functors from top to uh, some algebraic category. So the elements in pi one of, an, of a space X are represented by loops. And let's ignore the base point issue now. And loops are just continuous maps from the circle S1 to the space X. And such a map is the trivial element in this fundamental group if we can extend it to the two disk. So this element is trivial if there exists a continuous extension to the two disk of the map F, and we consider here S1 as the boundary of D2. So these are the elements and the non-trivial elements are the ones where such an extension to the two disk does not exist. So actually this does not quite look like we had defined what it meant for an element of the fundamental group to be trivial. It was, the condition was to be null homotopic. So maybe you can expand on why this is the same thing. Uh, yes, you're right. So the equivalence relation we put on these loops was homotopy, actually pointed homotopy of loops. 
So being trivial in the fundamental group by definition meant that there is a homotopy of this map F to the constant map. But this is the same. Uh, so maybe let's uh, write this in blue as a side comment. So originally we would say that F is trivial in the fundamental group if there exists a homotopy, actually a homotopy preserving base points to x such that the homotopy at time zero is f and the homotopy at time one is the constant map to the base point. But this is actually the same and um, you see that by looking at the map uh, that h induces on the cylinder where you collapse the, the top, bar, uh, top part. So this is the cylinder over S1. Now since H1 is the constant map, we can collapse the top part of it and get an induced map to X. And S1 still includes as the bottom part, right, sending this point to that point, and this is an extension of the original map F. And if you collapse in the cylinder the top part, what you get is homeomorphic to the two disk. So this uh, shows that you get this extension to the two disk and the reverse um, is very similar. So this is the same. Yeah. So in maybe in more geometric terms, what this means is um, you see this movie of how a loop shrinks to a point by going along concentric circles from the outside to the inside until you arrive at the midpoint of the disk where there's just the circle has deformed to a point so that you just have a constant loop. Yeah. All right, so let's take this as a starting point and let's try to, well, not fully construct more powerful functors now, but at least uh, let's try to see how we can modify um, the definition of elements and um, these elements will then be extended to groups, actually abelian groups, and to full functors. So how could we generalize this? We could, instead of taking the circle and the two disk, we could take a higher dimensional sphere and a higher dimensional disk. So Sn and Dn plus one. And then pretty much look at the same definition. So let's do that. Maybe I should change to black again. So we're looking at ways to generalize this in order to get more powerful functors from the topological spaces to some algebraic category. So, and first way to do that is to consider maps from Sn to X up to extension, meaning that we would consider such a map to be trivial in whatever group we're trying to construct right now if this can be extended to the n plus one disk. The only thing I don't see in this extension or generalization is how do we define the group structure? I mean, for n equals one, this was kind of clear because we could concatenate loops, but now I don't quite see what I would do with two higher dimensional and spheres to make, turn it into one sphere again. Completely right, and I don't want to give a full definition now. I just want to um, motivate how you can define other groups which are actually topological invariants and, and I just want to have a look at the elements. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm ignoring somehow how you can um, assemble this into a nice group and even more into a nice functor. But this is a description of the elements in what is called the higher homotopy groups. So pi one, uh, pi n of x, so it's, it's graded by this dimension n, so for each n you have uh, such a 
homotopy group pi n x and as you suggest that we don't see it yet, didn't define it completely, but you can define an abelian, actually abelian group structure if n is at least two and um, these pi n x will be functors from again pointed topological spaces to the category of abelian groups. So that's one way to um, modify the description of the elements in the fundamental group to get something more powerful. The problem with these homotopy groups is that they're very, very hard to compute. So they're easy to define, but the trade-off is that they're extremely hard to compute. So even S2, to know all the, we don't know all the homotopy groups of S2. I guess it's even worse than that. I think there is or maybe the only simply connected space of which we can compute all the homotopy groups, those are the contractible ones. Yeah. So, I mean, there are other compact manifolds of that which are simply connected for which we have no means of computing all those groups. For example, the spin group or something. These are all manifolds of which these invariants pi n are unknown. And it's one of the big endeavors in algebraic topology to, to understand on a con more conceptual level the homotopy groups of spheres. This is like yeah. the central object. But for this course, it's too hard. What we are seeking are invariants that are computable to some extent at least. Um, the trade-off will be that they will be harder to define. So let's go on. Let's try to explore other possibilities to somehow modify, to tweak the description of the elements in the fundamental group to get something new. And the next possibility I want to consider is I want to replace the spheres and the disks by manifolds, by closed manifolds. So consider maps from, let's say, an n-dimensional manifold, which is closed, to x up to extension. And the extension is now that there is an n plus one dimensional manifold. So I indicate this by um, writing n plus one in the exponent. And this manifold has a boundary. And this m is homeomorphic to this boundary. And there is a commutative diagram like that. So the map f gets extended to this n plus one dimensional manifold. And again, so what I'm writing here means that there is a way to define a group, actually an abelian group, whose elements are represented by these maps in such a way that an element represents the trivial element if there exists such an extension. So the difference to, the, to what we did before is that we now have the freedom to choose this co-boundary, this W. Beforehand, we were just considering um, S1, SM, and then we considered the disk as the co-boundary W, and this time we are completely free in, in, in our choices. And this makes a difference. So even if you take a sphere here, the freedom to choose more, more general boundaries or bounding manifolds makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So you can see that um, even in the case where M is the circle, so let's maybe in blue again, brief example. So Let's take the circle for M and the space X is a torus in which we drill here an additional hole and the map F is just the inclusion of this uh, boundary part. And then you can show that there is no extension to the disk. So let's write this in red, such an extension does not exist. So this element F, the inclusion of the boundary is a non-trivial element in the fundamental group of this object. However, there is an extension to a two-dimensional manifold with boundary and this is kind of obvious because this is already this two-dimensional manifold. Um, so there is an extension to this manifold via the identity, meaning that this element would represent a trivial element in this uh, construction above. So, so, 
obvious extension by the identity. Mm -hmm. And the point is that this construction does not work generically. It works here because S1 is the boundary of a manifold, but there do exist manifolds which are not the boundary of any higher dimensional right. manifold. And the groups that you get and the functors that you get are the Bordesen groups and the whole theory is called Bordesen theory, which is very powerful functor in algebraic topology and very important functor because it's also very close to the geometry, but it's still not the functor which is the main topic of this course. So in this course, we want to consider something called singular homology theory or singular homology groups. And the main reason is that they're very easy to compute. So for singular homology theory, we consider something, if you, if you just want to describe the, the elements of the singular homology groups to be defined, um, they're also represented by maps from something to X. But this something is not a manifold. This something is a more singular space. And this something is called a cycle. So there is something called an N cycle. Um, and this N cycle can be understood as a map from an N dimensional generalized more singular space if you want. to x. And these, these maps uh, still represent the trivial element in this singular homology groups if there is some form of extension to a boundary. Now, it's not really the way we think about and it's not really the way we will define these elements. The way we define them is actually as formal linear combinations. So let me at least give you a hint of what's coming in the next videos. So such a singular space could be, for example, this. This is definitely not a manifold. It could come with some map to x. So this is x somehow. And this is this is f. Okay. But the way we think about these cycles is as formal linear combination. So it will be something like this. So let's subdivide this into intervals. We have a bunch of intervals here. You can consider the restriction of the map F to these intervals. So what you get then from this picture is a bunch of maps from the interval to the space X. And the elements, the N cycles in this singular homology groups will be actually formal linear combinations of maps from the interval to x in the case where n is equal to 1. So an n cycle, well, maybe I should first say a 1 cycle, is a formal linear combination of maps from the unit interval to x with some additional properties. And an n cycle in general is something similar where we, uh, where we uh, replace the interval by the n simplex. So the, the two simplex is just a triangle and um, the three dimension would be three dimensional tetrahedron. tetrahedron and so on and so forth, right. So these singular spaces can somehow think of them as being built out of this uh, standard simplices and uh, you can think of this map then as a formal linear combinations of the restriction of the maps to this uh, standard simplices and these will be the elements. And in the next video, Holger will give you a formal definition of the singular homology groups, which will form the main topic of this course. And after that, we will see 
um, an axiomatic description of the singular homology groups that really helps to easily compute. 